Okay, good morning. <clears throat> I don't know how much sense any of this is going to make, but I'll try and walk you through what I'm doing here. Uh, this is the little bedini wheel thing I made. It's got six, six magnets. They go on each side. And there's two of these coils, two sets, one one set on each side of the wheel. You can see right there. There's four. There, these two are in series, and these two over here are in series. They are on separate. Uh, collecting and pulsing circuits. They all pulse from one driver, but the actual transistor that does the switching, there's one for each side. And this is the same circuit I had before that did the pulsing, the high-pitched, uh, I was doing a battery charger just based from feedback and these caps will collect the current and about every five seconds it dumps it was dumping back into the main bus however I have left that operation that dumping operation intact so that's why you're gonna see like these lights blinking it doesn't have anything to do with what I'm trying to prove but I just didn't disable the dumping part what I've done is instead of waiting for the capacitors to build up I've added a device I've added a VCR fan which I was using for other uh, another motor I mean from a VCR which I was using for different testing and I've added these four LEDs and that's going to pick up the back EMF or reverse voltage from the other bank. So we have two separate operations going here. The reverse voltage from one side is going to here and the other one is just going back to here. I might add before if I don't have something bleeding off the voltage the motor doesn't want to run very good once you get to collecting the back EMF off of it or reverse voltage however you want to whatever term you want to give it um, it runs great and between what it takes to turn the motor the actually the it's an attraction motor the magnets are being drawn towards the cores and then the pulse allows it to go on by and eliminates the the pull in reverse so it's kind of like Peter Lindemann's rotary attraction motor anyway um, it defies the numbers as far as what it should draw as to what it's actually drawing for current so we'll spin this and we'll crank it up goes about 300 this is a little hall switch there's my commentator that's what's switching it. Every magnet comes around, it pulses at the right time. Back EMF is running that. And that's back EMF from the other one. The reason it pulses is because I've still got that other dumping feature enabled. You take all of the load what it's taken to power these coils per ohms and the back EMF running the lights and there's more there there's a lot more to be had and 
that motor, whatever it draws. And then you take all that and you look at the, at the amp gauge. And it really doesn't compute. Quite a mess, huh? A lot of stuff there. Anyhow, that's what's behind the email I sent you with all the all the numbers. Here's the, the scope. I'll stretch it out a bit so you can see it. Kind of busy, huh? That's a combination of frequency, pulse, back EMF, and if there's any extra energy to be had in anything, I think that's where it's at. I think a clean circuit is uh, not a good thing if you're trying to get extra energy from the transient, because there's transient. There's one millisecond. Anyhow, that's what it is. Okay, this is March 23rd, Easter Sunday, 2008. And I'm messing around down here with this machine. Thought I'd give you a glimpse. Been running for about an hour now. There's your input voltage. And there's the input amperage. This is the feedback amperage what's being fed from the generator coils back to the main bus at this many volts. The temperature of the room and the temperature of the uh, switches, transistors. This is the speed. is number two drive coil for the motor. This is the main bus. That's a current control counter induction feedback coil. This is a 3.5 ohm 1000 watt resistor. And once in a while, we get that. What is that? Can't we keep that there like that? That is an anomaly I would like to understand better.
Okay, it's October 14th. Uh, again, I'm Ron Kloss, and this is my replication of Bill Muller's Dynamo. We have removed, this is the second test, we've removed the battery from the delivery side. So, the only 12 volt system attached is the one that's going in. Instead, put a cord plugged into a lamp. It's a 100 watt light bulb. That's the out. This is uh, with all the switches open, no loop back, no feedback. That's the out amperage. This is the out voltage. A little better. In voltage, in average. Okay. These are the two switches. This is a three ohm. This one. This is all the rest of these which tune it to less, just a little under 0.1 ohms total. So, we'll throw in 0.3 ohms. It's out amperage. There's uh, what it did to the out voltage. Pretty much took everything out of the light. There's in voltage. In amperage. Now I'm going to throw in the other switch. This is all of the resistance. in amperage. In voltage. There's the out amperage. Out voltage. This is DC by the way. We'll flip this open just for Only the three ohm, point three ohm, point one, a little less than. Pretty much have nothing left over there. So with the second battery not in line, you do the math. The performance of the machine is a lot better. I guess the sum of all the parts, the system is only good as the weakest point, which in the previous test would have been the other bank of batteries. So, uh, once again, you decide, here's what we got. By the way, nothing's heating. This thing can lug all day like this. Nothing gets hot. Except, except these. But that's to be expected. Speed a little better. Okay, Kirk, here's a little, <clears throat> a little visual of resonance or harmonics uh, with the coil. And uh, this is the, this is 0.3 amps. 
this is increments it's a one amp meter got 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and 1 right now we're riding on 0.3 exactly and I'm gonna you look at the the res the sine wave down here and I'm gonna change the frequency and watch what happens to the ammeter right now you hear no tone there's no audible tone now I'm gonna change the frequency watch what happens to the ammeter in comparison to what you're seeing on the on the scope now you can hear it there it's almost not audible but we're still vibrating we're doing a one millis one millisecond pulse and then I'm gating it now we're down to below 0.2. Now we'll watch the scope. We'll run it back up. Increasing it. Increasing it. There comes a point. See? There's a point right there. Now there's a harmonic. Go up again. Another harmonic. Now you hear no sound. Look at the scope. That's an exact resonance with the coil. That's an RC resonance. As you can see, that doesn't necessarily mean you're using less current. That's more current than the correct harmonic to match the coil windings. Now we'll go up a little more. Down it goes again. Lower it, lower it. There's a harmonic. Another one. And we're almost below audible. And there you go. There's the resonance of the coil. There's the hertz of the coil right there. So you can see the difference between harmonics, resonance, and the actual, right now we're matching the natural coil construction, the hertz. And that's the lowest amperage draw. So there you have it. You are looking at the 24 volt of eight car batteries that's the voltage the increments are at 10 volts and the time is one millisecond on the scope now I'm going to start the generator and pay attention to the additional line that appears plus the spikes coming up from it And while we're at it, I was told that you can't generate from the bolts that are holding the coils on. I think maybe you can. There's the coil around the nut of the bolt that holds the coil. See? Twenty milliamp LED. Much, but it isn't impossible. You can harvest something off of them.